In all of sports, the things we love the most to watch are rivalries. It's what sports are built upon, you want to pick sides, and then root against whoever you don't like. It's human nature. Well, for disc golf, we've had some really good rivalries over the years. Dating all the way back to the start of the game, once players started to dominate, others had to rise up to challenge them. This resulted in historically a great rivalry, as well as building the foundation of the game we now have. Disc golf is 99% chummy chummy, players getting along with everyone, and that's all good. But there has been some rivalry building that was not so nice. Words have been said, actions have been taken, but the majority of the rivals we have today consist of what happened out on the course. The best rivalries in disc golf from the greatest players we've ever seen and their counterparts. Here we go. Early in the 2010s is when both of these players started to rise up, but this one doesn't just have to do with their play out on the course. A lot of the rivalry between these two players happened over a company. Let me set the stage for you. In 2013, Prodigy Discs was created. They offered a lot of big name players some special deals to come over to their company. Players like Kayla Visca, Jeremy Colling, Paul Ulibarri, and Ricky Wysocki. At the time, in 2013, Macbeth was offered to go there as well. He ultimately chose to stay with Innova until 2018 when he went to Discraft. One player who also went to Prodigy at that time was Will Shustrick. During his big break of 2010 when he won USTGC, Shustrick was one of the biggest players. Meanwhile, Macbeth was still rising up and wouldn't win a major until 2012. They would compete against each other during this time, but it wasn't until 2013 when they first had a playoff. At the Memorial in 2013, Macbeth would record the highest rated round in history. Will Shustrick would be winning the tournament and in fact would have won it if he had put a total on his scorecard. Instead, he was given a two-stroke penalty after the round. This put him in a playoff against Macbeth. First playoff hole, Shustrick would birdie and Macbeth would par. Simple as that, Shustrick was able to secure his win. But at the time, they were celebrating for Prodigy. Prodigy this, Prodigy that, but in winning the playoff, he didn't even throw a Prodigy disc. He threw a Firebird. Macbeth would actually comment that he threw the Firebird better than him, which is funny coming from a player who was repping Prodigy. Prodigy players were reportedly stripping stamps off of other discs and restamping them with Prodigy. Now, Prodigy was allowing players to throw a mixed bag, so maybe this wasn't a big deal. But the playoff made for a great rivalry, Macbeth vs Prodigy, but out on the course, it was Macbeth vs Shustrick. This wouldn't be the only playoff these players would have. In 2014 at USDGC, they would have another one. Three-way playoff with Shustrick, Macbeth, and Johnny McRae. After missing some really short putts for chances to win, Shustrick was finally able to take it down. Shustrick might have beat Macbeth twice in playoffs, but ultimately, Macbeth would have the upper hand on the career. The 2014 major would be Shustrick's last big win. Meanwhile, Macbeth would go on to have one of the best careers in disc golf. Macbeth would later comment on playing against Will and that he was his least likely player to play against. Not as much animosity between these two competitors. For the FPO division, there has been complete dominance by two players, Paige Pierce and Katrina Allen. Now this is just the past decade or so, so not dating back to the start of disc golf. Without Katrina Allen, Paige Pierce would have won a lot more majors. And without Paige Pierce, Katrina Allen would have done the same. During their time together on the big stage, Paige Pierce had gotten the upper hand, but doesn't mean Katrina didn't have her fair share of wins. 17 majors for Paige, 7 for Katrina. For those 17 majors, Katrina came in second just once, but podiumed plenty of times. For Paige, she came in second to Katrina three times. The most dramatic one being in 2021, when Paige was in the lead and would blow up on the final hole. Katrina made a great shot to put the pressure on, but the fact was that Paige made a double bogey to lose the tournament. Head to head record overall, Paige is the clear favorite, but if it wasn't for Katrina to challenge her over the years, Paige would be hands down the greatest FPO player of all time. She still might be, but the rivalry between her and Katrina has made her storyline so much better. In 2022, at the Las Vegas Challenge, Paige would go for Eagle, making a mistake and throwing it in the water. Tied with her at the time is Katrina, who went on to make a smooth birdie and take down another win. Like I already said, this rivalry is one on the course, not off of it. They don't have the drama that Macbeth had with Shustrick. Instead, these two players show up and dominate the sport. They are clearly the best two players in FBO from the last 10 years. Paige is the edge on the win category, but you have to give Katrina her fair share when it comes to the best rivalry in the FBO division. Every great player needs their counterpart, and for the men's side of disc golf, it's Ricky Wysocki. There's a long and very interesting history between these two players. From companies to different comments, the play on the course and crazy playoffs, these guys have it all. What's great about this rivalry is that it's still going. Ever since both of these guys popped up on everyone's radar in the early 2010s, disc golf has never been the same. Wysocki came out of nowhere to win the one and only PDGA championship in 2011. Then 2012 was the first world championship that Macbeth captured. Since then, they have battled out at almost every tournament with the competition becoming incredible at some of the biggest events. But first, the drama that built the rivalry. 
Just like for Shoestrick, Waisaki had joined Prodigy at the start of it in 2013. It was Macbeth vs Prodigy in a sense, but Waisaki was also on that team. In 2014, Waisaki would have his best performance at Worlds up to that date. But it was Macbeth in 2012, 13, and he would try to keep the streak going in 2014. After a grueling tournament and one of the best playoffs in disc golf history, Macbeth would come out on top for his third Worlds victory in a row. This would be just the beginning of the battle between these players. Ricky would win Worlds in 16 and 17, both times Macbeth came in second. Comments have been said in the past, in the same interview where Macbeth said he didn't like Shoestrick, he also quoted as saying, if it was close between him and Waisaki, you can pretty much count him out. This interview would spark up the most drama between players, but other than that, it seems to be pretty much an on-the-course rivalry. Even unto this day, both players are at the top of the field and battling it out. Ricky has seen a draw when it comes to majors in the past few years, but he has clearly dominated the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Macbeth has done better in majors, he just hasn't won as much as Ricky has on tour. Head to head statistically throughout their whole career in every category, Macbeth just barely edges out Waisaki. When it comes to majors though, Macbeth is the clear favorite with 17. It's the best current rivalry in the game. You can count on it being a continuing story throughout the next few years as both players dominate and win on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. It's one of the reasons Disc Golf is as fun as it is to watch. They have battled so many times, so when it happens again, you can't wait to see who's going to win. This may be the greatest rivalry Disc Golf has and it will ever see. It's hard to judge these things, lots of arguments for Ricky and Paul or Cat and Paige, but these two, these guys throw down and made Disc Golf what it is today. Ken Climo, aka The Champ vs Barry Schultz. Ken Climo dominated disc golf in the 90s, winning every world championship from 1990 to 98, then would win plenty of the majors that started to pop up in the 2000s. He was dominating and someone needed to rise up and challenge him for the titles. Since the national tour had yet to be created, the only real way to determine the best at the time was through majors. In 1999, the USDGC started, so for the next few years, it was that and Worlds. As his reputation grew for all the majors, Climo needed a real challenge. That came when Barry Schultz popped onto the scene. He would finish second to Climo at the 2000 Worlds. Climo won by 8 shots, but this was the best finish for Schultz up to that date. Climo won the first two USDGCs, but in 2001, he met his first real challenge with Schultz. The champ would be dethroned from his USDGC run, Schultz would go on to win his first major title by one shot over Climo. The next year they would trade places, Climo taking down the USDGC title with Schultz in second place. Back and forth they went, battling it out at the Worlds and USDGC, but the majority of the time Climo would have the upper hand. 2003 would be the year of Barry Schultz. He would win his first Worlds title and would continue his momentum into the USDGC major event. This event would become the building block of what this rivalry was built upon. 2003 USDGC would be won by Barry Schultz in a 10-hole playoff against Ken Climo. An incredibly long and grueling event, but Schultz came out on top. When it was all said and done, head-to-head -head, Climo won 18 majors, but it wasn't until Schultz showed up in the later part of those major titles that he was challenged. Barry Schultz would win 5 majors, 3 USDGCs, and 2 Worlds. These two were the only names at the top for those few years, making it out as one of the best rivalries in disc golf. They had their run, and this was mainly in the past, but when you look at the top players in the sports, we are lucky that two pairs competed against each other at the same time. Climo had Schultz, Macbeth had Waisaki. It's these moments, these rivalries, that make the game so special. You need someone to push you. Without these rivalries, you never knew what the greatest were capable of. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to check out the channel. If you liked the video, plenty of other ones just like this. Social media links in the description below if you want to follow me there. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the next videos to come. Alright, we'll see you next time. Cheers.